Welcome to episode two of My Little Unity. Take two, because my last take, I forgot to record the audio. Woohoo! I can develop very developly like, yes, no, maybe so. Uh, anyways, in my previous video, I showed you guys how to you create an audio visualizer script, which is making all these columns you see dance about on the screen. I like, and after that video, I got a lot of requests. People were wanting to also know how to pull in um, input from the microphone because I had done a teaser video about about showing you guys how to do that a while ago and I never quite got to it because I'm both hella busy and hella lazy. So anyways, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys how to crap capture, crap capture, yes, capture input from your microphones and record it to an audio source in Unity and then the audio visualizer that you learned how to put together in the previous episode will automatically pick that up and use it in the scene like you see here. Um, a couple of things I want to warn you about. I'm not going to go over how to do the UI settings. These are here for me to tinker with stuff and uh, I might do a future episode on how I put together panels and animate them and stuff. If you would like to know about that, leave a comment please. It helps me know what I need to do next, recording-wise, what people want to see. Um, and this was helpful for me because, as you will see, getting a list of your devices can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, well, not too much of a pain in the butt, but it's much nicer to have your devices listed in the UI and just click on them instead of like looking up, oh, I, my device is called built-in microphone, let me hard-code that value in. Uh, hard-coded values suck. Okay. Anyways, so these are the audio input devices I have on my computer, and only one of them actually works. So do be warned. There's logic in the script that will save you from crashing the project if you have an input device that doesn't actually work. The pocket audio headphones and the pocket audio microphone are actually part of the Pocket Cam app that I sometimes use with my computer in order to hack things. Uh, and by hacking, I mean life hacking, not like breaking into somebody's system. It's more like, I need a camera somewhere in my house so I can figure out which circuit breakers go to the lights in the bathroom, so I'll set my phone up there and then take my laptop with me to the circuit box. Anyways, that's that's more than you asked for to know about. Uh, anyways, uh, so that's... The UI has a lot of little code in here just to wire it up, so I'm not going to go over that. That'll be another thing. Let's stop this. It's chewing through my laptop cycles, which are delicious, but it's also warming my laptop quite a bit. Let's go to the script. Um, alrighty, so the audio visualizer script has changed a little bit since the last one. I'm not going to go over that because all the changes are really related to wiring it up to the UI. Um, now the microphone input CS script is where the real work goes on. Um, a lot of this script is actually just wiring it up to the UI again and whatnot. So like in the start function here, this is all wiring it up to the UI. So just to walk through that very, very briefly so you don't have to worry about it. Um, we're getting the audio source from our object, obviously. And this is this mic. This right here is a microphone. It is a sealed class, a sealed static class that you can call anytime in Unity, so long as you have the Unity engine using the Unity engine. I don't know why you wouldn't. Uh, you're, you're very advanced if you decide to get rid of that and start doing other things, and you, you know what you're doing already. So microphone. Um, if you call the dot devices here, it gives you an array. Of device names as strings. So you loop over that array and I'm storing the name of the first device in the microphone one just in case I haven't already picked it through my UI so I have something and then I'm creating a list where I'm adding these to it and then I pass that options list into uh, into my drop down and that's how I get that in the UI. But I won't go over that to too much detail now, skipping down to the part that you were really wanting to hear about. How do I get audio into this? It's really easy. Microphone.start. I'm going to hover over start, so maybe it'll show us. There we go. So the first variable is a string of the device name. Um, I believe you can also pass it the index uh, 
for the index value, so 0 through whatever. Passing in the string is best. Um, this is a string, this is a variable, string variable holding my microphone name that I picked out from the UI, so I don't have to type it in and hard code it. The second value is whether or not the source should loop. I always I set it to true. Um, we're not just recording a one-off, we're not recording a one-off here. Um, so it's going to loop over and over and over again and re-record over the audio as it gets, it's going to get to the end and then start over from the beginning, record over it again. Uh, let's see, this third option there is the length of the recording. So I just set it to 10 seconds, it's kind of an arbitrary number. It's going to record for 10 seconds and then it's going to start over from the beginning and start recording over my 10 seconds again and just do that forever. The audio sample rate, I set that to uh, 44,100 just because that's like a common rate. Uh, you can go with whatever you want there. I think you might, might go lower. Um, I just like the nice high rate. Somebody who knows more about audio than I do could probably explain why you might want a lower one. Probably going to save you CPU. Um, but anyways, uh, the next thing is, is now you've got, now this starts the recording and saves it as a clip on your audio source. And now you're going to loop, you want to make sure that clip is set to looping. Oh, I kind of forgot to mention this first part here. Stop your audio source before you start doing this, just in case you're playing it. And it's just cleaner that way. Alrighty then, now down here. Uh, this is where you do a little bug catching. So you've picked your microphone, you've started recording, but is it really recording? Well, uh, microphone dot is recording, pass it the microphone name, and it'll basically tell you whether or not you can record from that device. It's not genuinely telling you that this device is recording at this very moment when this very frame is called. It's more or less saying that they can, it can be recorded from. Now, if I pass in one of my two dead inputs, it comes back as false. And then I come down to my debugging area down here. Uh, with my regular mic, it'll come back as true, but that does not actually mean it has put anything into that clip yet. So what we do is we call microphone.getPosition and pass in the microphone name and say greater than zero. So, and this is a little while loop that has absolutely nothing in it. All it's doing is finding out whether or not the microphone's position in the recording is actually advancing. Once it's actually started advancing, you know it's actually recording. Why doesn't microphone is recording do that? You know, tell you when it's genuinely recording, I don't know. But if you were to get rid of this while loop and try to play this code, it kind of depends on your machine. Maybe your machine's fast enough that the recording will start before, you know, from the point where you start the recording before it hits audio play. Mine, it doesn't. It never does. So why take that chance? Just put yourself in a little while loop here, and once the microphone starts to proceed, it'll record. Now, don't worry about this being stuck in an infinite loop, because that's what microphone is recording is going to prevent. It's basically saying the recording has started. This is saying the recorded has progressed so that you have something to play. I think that's probably the better way to put it. Then you play your audio source. Of course, you gotta play it or you won't hear it. Now, to get, that's, that's it. That's all you need to do to get microphone input into your uh, Unity game. But there is one more step. If you, like me, are not trying to hear your own voice or whatever you're recording through the mic, come back out your speakers because that's annoying you have to mute the audio. Now you can't just go to microphone and say set the volume to zero because then your audio visualizer won't pick up anything. It's going to be getting a you know, flat line. There's no volume. There's nothing to analyze. So what you have to do is under this output is create a mixer called I'm calling it keep quiet, but just create a mixer. So you can create a mixer over here by going right click, create an audio mixer. That'll result in something like this. So what I did is I just made an audio mixer and I set the threshold to negative 80 dB. That will not affect the audio visualizer's ability to analyze the sound file, but it will prevent the sound from playing through your speakers and prevent an accurate effect. 
let's see. Yeah, and then you just stick that into your uh, mixing channel output here. That's pretty much it. Everything else that's in the code is wiring up the UI and just playing around with it. And doing this will result in your voice being put out through here. Now you from here, the sky's the limit. You can play with it. You can change the frequency that you're looking at to be specifically the frequency that the human vocal range generally is in, which is generally around 40 and 60 hertz on up to about 9,000 hertz. So you don't need the whole frequency <laughs> spectrum. Um, yeah, that's everything I got for you guys. I hope this helps. And I hope you find this useful and you've enjoyed at least a little bit listening to my rambling on. If you have any questions, uh, link them down below in the comments. That's Let me know what you want to see next in a video. That's how I know what to do my next recording on, what, what the next episode might be about. And the entire project will be for download in the doobly-doo. And the code's been commented, so hopefully that'll make it apparent and obvious what I'm doing. All right, take care. Happy coding.